Hi guys, in this video we're going to start by thinking about relative atomic mass before moving on to how we can calculate relative atomic mass, finishing off with a summary. If you've seen our video on the structure of the atom, you'll know that protons, neutrons and electrons, and therefore atoms, are all incredibly small and incredibly light. For example, a proton and a neutron weigh approximately 1.7 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. And these are both about 2,000 times heavier than an electron. It's therefore most useful to describe the mass of an atom by comparing it to a standard atom, giving us what is known as a relative atomic mass. We can formally define relative atomic mass, or our AR value, as the average mass of one atom of that element relative to one twelfth the mass of one atom of carbon-12. What this means is that we use one atom of carbon-12 as our standard atom, where carbon-12 is just an isotope of carbon, specifically the most commonly occurring isotope of carbon, that contains 12 neutrons, and therefore has a nuclear symbol of 12,6c. This atom is chosen as a standard atom, as is very commonly occurring, and also because it allows chemists all over the world to compare the masses of atoms to one standard. As carbon-12 has a mass number of 12, we therefore know that there is a total of 12 protons and neutrons in the nucleus of an atom of this element. As we've seen, the majority of a mass of an atom is within the nucleus in the form of protons or neutrons. We can therefore see that 1 12th, the mass of an atom that contains 12 protons or neutrons, is going to be approximately equal to the mass of a proton or a neutron, as protons and neutrons have essentially the same mass. 1 12th, the mass of one atom of carbon-12, is only approximately the mass of a proton and a neutron, because there will be some mass due to electrons. But in general, we can say, if an element only has one isotope, its relative atomic mass will be exactly the same as its mass number. Remember that different isotopes of an element will have exactly the same number of protons, but different number of neutrons. An example of an element that only has one isotope is fluorine, which has the chemical symbol of F. The mass number of fluorine is 19, and its atomic number is 9 telling us that an atom of fluorine contains 9 protons in the nucleus and 10 neutrons, as the number of protons is the difference between the atomic number and the mass number. As the relative atomic mass gives us the mass of one atom of the element relative to the approximate mass of a proton or a neutron, if the element only has one isotope, its relative atomic mass is just the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus of the atom of that element. So, for fluorine, the relative atomic mass or AR value, it's just going to be equal to the mass number, which we can see from the nuclear symbol is 19. What this means is if an atom of carbon-12 has a mass of 12, then an atom of fluorine has a mass of 19, allowing you to compare the mass of atoms using easy round numbers, rather than, for example, getting an answer in terms of kilograms. So, what about if an element has more than one isotope? Well, we need to look at the definition of our relative atomic mass, which tells us that this value gives us the average mass of one atom of the element. What this means is that if an element has more than one isotope, the relative atomic mass is going to be the weighted average of all of the isotopes. To see what we mean, let's look at an example. Chlorine is an example of an element that exists in more than one isotope. And you can see the nuclear symbols for the two different isotopes in this diagram. Because both isotopes are chlorine, they both have the same chemical symbol, Cl, and the same atomic number, 17. However, what is different between the two isotopes is the number of neutrons, and therefore the mass number. For chlorine, what we find is that 75% of all chlorine atoms are the isotope on the left-hand side with a mass number of 35, and that the remaining 25% of chlorine atoms are the isotope on the right, with a mass number of 37. As a result, our relative atomic mass, which is the average mass of one atom of the element, isn't exactly 35 or 37. Instead, the relative atomic mass for chlorine, or AR value, is the weighted average of the isotopes, which in this case is 35.5, telling us that if an atom of carbon-12 weighs 12 units, your average atom of chlorine weighs 35.5 units. We've just seen that in the case when an element has more than one isotope, the relative atomic mass is the weighted average of all of the isotopes. 
In these instances, you can use a formula in order to calculate the relative atomic mass, which is that the relative atomic mass, or AR value for an element, is equal to the sum of what is known as the isotope abundance multiplied by the isotope mass number. And this sum of isotope abundance multiplied by isotope mass number is all divided by the sum of all isotope abundances. We can see what all of these terms mean by looking at an example. Or an example of an element that exists as more than one isotope is the example that we just looked at, chlorine. We saw that chlorine exists as two different isotopes with mass numbers of 35 and 37. We said that 75% of all chlorine atoms have a mass number of 35 and that 25% have a mass number of 37. These percentages are known as our isotope abundances, telling us about the relative amount of each isotope that is naturally present within our samples of chlorine atoms. If we look at our formula for calculating the relative atomic mass, we can see that we have all the information that we need in order to calculate the relative atomic mass of chlorine. So our relative atomic mass, or AR value for chlorine, is going to be equal to the sum of isotope abundance times isotope mass number for each of the possible isotopes. So in the example of chlorine, we have two possible isotopes. And for each, we have an isotope mass number and an isotope abundance. Therefore, the numerator of our fraction that allows us to work out the relative atomic mass is going to be firstly the isotope abundance of our first isotope, which is 75%, multiplied by the isotope mass number for this isotope which we can see is 35. To this, we then add an equivalent value for our other isotope, for which the abundance is 25% and the mass number is 37. The denominator of our fraction for the relative atomic mass is then the sum of all the isotope abundances, which in this case is going to be 75% for the isotope with a mass number of 35 and 25% for the isotope with a mass number of 37. We are now ready to calculate our relative atomic mass, and we can start by cancelling our percentage symbols from the top and bottom. We do this by working out all the different multiplications. On the top of our fraction, we have 75% multiplied by 35, which if you work out with a calculator, you can see is 2,625%. To this we add 25% multiplied by 37, which is 925%. This is then all divided by the result of 75% plus 25%, which you can easily see is going to equal 100%. At this point, we can cancel our percentage symbols from the top and from the bottom, leaving us with the fact that our relative atomic mass is going to be equal to 2,625 plus 925, which is 3,550 divided by 100. If you work this out, you can see that our relative atomic mass of chlorine is 35.5, which is exactly the same as the value that was given earlier on in the video, but that here we've calculated it using the isotope abundances and the isotope mass numbers. In this example, we kept the percentage symbols in and then cancelled them out. But in general, if the abundances are given as percentages, they should sum to 100. This is because when calculating the relative atomic mass, we need to consider all the possible isotopes of that element which will have a total abundance of 100%. We can now look at another example, this time of an element that has three different isotopes. This element is magnesium. The three isotopes of magnesium will all have the same atomic number, as they'll all be the same element and therefore have the same number of protons in the nucleus. For magnesium, the number of protons, 12, and therefore all three isotopes have an atomic number of 12. The mass numbers are what are different between the different isotopes. There's an isotope of magnesium with a mass number of 24, one with a mass number of 25, and one with a mass number of 26. In order to calculate our relative atomic mass of magnesium, we also need to know the isotope abundances. And these are 79% for the isotope with a mass number of 24, 10% for the isotope with a mass number of 25, and 11% for the isotope with a mass number of 26. As you can see, the sum of the isotope abundances adds up to 100%.
So, again, we have all the information we need in order to work out the relative atomic mass of magnesium, or its AR value. And we can start by drawing out our fraction. As we've just seen, our sum of isotope abundances is 100%. So we can already write in our denominator. On the top part of the fraction, we're going to have the sum of the product of the mass number with the isotope abundance for each of the isotopes. Therefore, we're going to have the sum of 24 multiplied by 79% for the first isotope, and we're going to add to this 25 times 10% for the second isotope, and then finally 26 times 11% for the final isotope. We then just need to work out all of these brackets in order to give us our relative atomic mass. And if we do so, we can see that we have 1,896% plus 250% plus 286%. And that all of this is divided by 100%. If you cancel the percentage signs from top and bottom and work out the value of the fraction, you'll find that the relative atomic mass, or AR value, of magnesium is 24.32. This relative atomic mass value is closest to the mass number of the isotope with a mass number of 24, which makes sense as this is the most abundant, and therefore contributes the most to the relative atomic mass, which is an average value. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing GCSE chemistry resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the stat revised smiley face and together let's make GCSE chemistry a walk in the park.